Hello? Well, that's dark, isn't it? <laughs> Look at the game we're playing, everybody. That's not right, is it? Let's try that again. Let's have some music. Hello? Okay, well, I'll just describe the game to you. That's all right, isn't it? Is this a case of me needing to deactivate and then reactivate something? It is! Hey, sometimes things just need to be turned off and on again, don't they? Hi everybody! Today, we're going to be playing, and you're going to get to see, uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, which is the latest game from Garfield Games in their historical series. And it's on Kickstarter right now. There's a link in the description to it, I hope. He said, no, he said that, you better have put it in there. Uh, but yes, you can uh, back it right now. It launched today. Uh, and if you would like to see a solo game first, there's going to be one right now. But I should say, j before we get started, that the solo mode is going to be different. There was stuff that needed... It, it couldn't be done in the prototype. So yeah, the solo mode is going to be a bit different to what you see here. But yeah, everything I'm doing is the actual multiplayer game as well. So even if you're not bothered about solo... You'll see some good stuff, won't you? I hope, anyway. I hope some kind of victory. Rach thinks that we should put the difficulty of the bot up. We played, uh, at the weekend, a kind of, like, two-player solo game. But Rach played most of it. And, uh, yeah, she she thinks that uh, I'm being cowardly putting it on uh, one-star difficulty again. But hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Shem. Shem Phillips, co-designer, is in the chat as well if you've got any questions about the game or the campaign. So we are kind of rebuilding a city. We are constructing a temple. We are building walls and gates. We are keeping the altar fire burning. We are traveling uh, around these camps. We are teaching the Torah and putting scribes out. Uh, all sorts of uh, things that will hopefully link together in a lovely way. And you might see, like, shadows of some things you uh, might have seen before in uh, Garfield games, but in, like, new and cool ways, I hope. Oh, yeah, I should have uh, checked with you that the sound was all working before I started blathering on. I can, I can see the... usually. If I can see the thing working... Is the bot working? That's what... What I was doing just just before the stream started, I was investigating why the robot wasn't working. And like everything w that doesn't work, absolutely no reason it shouldn't have been working. Turned it off, turned it on again. It seems to be working. Where's Martin? Hey, you've changed the Marty command. That is where he is. He, he hasn't been up here, like, this year, I feel like. He hasn't, uh, his, his chair's all lovely and plumped for him. Not bothered. So, hopefully, he'll, uh... He'll maybe come snooping and we'll get to show him off. But yeah, the, there's ways to support the channel if you'd like to do that. So, let's have a look. There's all those areas on the board. I don't get to go first, really. But shall we have a look at my player area? Go on, let's do that. Because this is what you would be doing in the multiplayer game as well. So we have a deck of character cards here that have got a lot of different things on them. They've got some banners. They've got a way of scoring, should you choose to use them for scoring later in the game. They've got their roles. This is the singer. Give you three red banners. We'll give you some scoring for everyone that you've um, been... Um, everyone that you've... It's every Levite that you've put out. Trying to remember terms and names and things. Uh, so at the moment we've got one out there. So I chose to use it for scoring. She wouldn't get me a lot, but I could go into that more later on. Uh, and they've also got a trading, like a, a trading role that they can be used for as well in the turn that you play them. There are ways of bending a load of these rules, of course. So on your turn, these cards that do so many things, you'll play a card into a new stack. You will get to do things based on the, the power of those banners that you've now got. So you've got three spaces for cards and over the course of turns, so if I was to do that first turn, I'll be doing one of the red actions. I've got three banners to spend on various things. Hey, I could do this next time. Now I've got four banners to spend on things. There are a couple of other ways of getting banners as well. 
to boost these actions because if you want to do better things you need more and more banners to be able to do that in one great big go there's all sorts of bits on my playboard there's blessings that i can gain uh, there's all of these tiles here that you can see are removable they have a cost in the top left i can pay to flip these over so i've got a bit of a restrictive resource area over here i can pay six money flip that over I've got unlimited resources uh, for the rest of the game. I can get, I can earn better food. I can earn better resources uh, by upgrading those things. And I start the game off with a couple of resources dictated by that tile that I got. Everyone's got the same deck of character cards, but yeah, it's uh, rather than say like building up your deck, as we've seen before, it's kind of deconstructing your deck because you're going to be taking cards out of it in order to use their scoring ability. But at the same time, you've lost like like if I re if I've really gone heavy into red and I've got a load of people to score, I want this out to be in scoring. But then it's not in the game giving me all of these banners to keep doing that. Uh, so there's a, a balance between all of that stuff in short of what a player might do. But we'll see it in action. First player, though, is the bot who uh, has two decks of cards and they are going to dictate what the bot does. So there is uh, one star and two star difficulty. And I said earlier, that the solo mode is going to be a little bit different. Uh, so yeah, don't um, take everything I'm saying for 100%. How long did physical setup take? Uh, not very long. Like the first time longer, of course, but like, it's just like, I could do it pretty much from memory already that like, you, uh, you just need to take 10 of each resource out. All of these things get put in a bag and we put so many out on the board, shuffling up the tiles. There's different gold and wood back tiles that go in different rows. Not, not very long at all. Like I would, I would say quicker than a lot of euros. Like you've only got to shuffle like little decks as well of your own cards and your wall building cards. That's probably like probably like 10 minutes, but I was, I was doing it pretty leisurely. I wasn't rushing. Uh, so yes, we need to draw a, and there's a little player aid for you and for the bot as well. On each turn, you need to draw a focus card for them and a scheme card. So first of all, the focus card. This is going to help them make decisions. So if they want to go somewhere, they're going to start at the old gate and they are going to go in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. Only applicable for certain actions, but yeah, we might need that in a minute. Then we have the trade portion. So a bit similar to what our cards are like. If they can do a trade right now, they'll do it. So here they either need to spend three silver, which is the money in the game, for two points, or they'll spend five of it for four points. At the moment, they start the game, as this side of the board told us, they start the game with two. So they don't have enough for either of those trades. So we just skip it. The, so that's the focus card, just telling us, other than the trade, things they might do should a certain action crop up. Then they have their scheme card that's going to tell us the action they're going to take. Got three different sections on it. We just work down until they can do one of the things. And it's basically got a condition. Have they got these things? Then they'll do this thing. They don't need to spend these things. Uh, so have they got two workers and two gold? No. They would have uh, put some scribes out and done some teaching of the tour of them. Have they got two gold? No. Would have done some wall building if they had. So they're going to gain a gold and they're going to move two spaces along this altar track. Where's their flame gone? Oh, it's hanging out with their workers. One, two. Now this altar track, we'll also have a chance to move up. Every space along, well not every space, all the spaces that have got things underneath uh, your flame token will gain you stuff. Here it's a food and then a silver. The bot gains this as well. And later on, you get more and more resources. But the bot changes, bends the rules of some things. So for the bot, whenever they gain a resource that isn't gold, they gain gold. Whenever they gain food, they gain silver. So instead of gaining a food and a silver, they gain two silver. You can see the legs of some kind of tripod poking out there. The altar as well, let's talk about this while we're on it. We've got two profits on the altar. 
that start in these positions can be different based on there's two double-sided cards, so four configurations that these profits can be in for each of the rounds. There are going to be uh, three weeks, basically, that the, the history that this is based on has been condensed into. So we're going to have three six-day weeks, and they are going to uh, end in a Sabbath, which is a kind of... The scoring involved, but there's all sorts of other things involved as well on that. So it tells us the, the three rounds as well. So the profits on the board here dictate a few things. If you, by the Sabbath, are in this position behind the first one, then you will get this. Sometimes a punishment. In this case, it's a, it's a little reward. Get a food. If you are between them, this thing happens, which you get to bring a person back off your player board and use them for something else. Uh, and if you've gone all the way along, you get the reward instead. And there is an extra reward for the person who is furthest along at uh, the end of each time as well. So, I think, oh yes, if they can't do their trade, they move their tent along as well. So we could talk about the map, where the tents are, because I can do this as well. So you can move a certain number of spaces. Every space that you've moved over corresponds to a reward. So you're going to get a thing from that. In this case, the bot is going to get one of the red blessings. This means that this blessing moves along on your player board when all of your blessings have reached this position. So when you've done a whole column of them, uh, you'll get this reward. And they don't all have to be done at the same time. Uh, but yeah, that's how you can unlock more and more things by doing that. The bot, incidentally, uh, ignores the card that tells us the rewards for doing the, the altar track. They always do this. So they'll always get this punishment. They'll always get this uh, decent reward. They'll always get this uh, best reward if they've moved the most. And they've already uh, moved a couple. Okay. So yes, they've had all of their awards and stuff. That's it. So we can come to me now. I've kind of described what uh, we're going to do. But what would I like to do? So the resources that I've got and the cards that I've got. So grey would involve generally a lot of uh, either clearing rubble from these spaces and or building things that are in the now cleared spaces and there are little reminders on the player board as well like if you want to do the clearing of rubble it costs you this many banners if you want to uh, put some scribes out depending on the row that you want it costs you this many banners and either some silver or gold moving the tents this many banners gets you this many spaces it's all described like on here for what you want to do so based on the cards that i've kind of got in front of me there's a good chance to do a bit of red or grey, I think. There's no particular trades that I'm kind of desperate for right away. Because, yeah, I, I don't have um, the stone to turn into money here, which is cool. I could do it an infinite number of times, uh, but infinitely zero without any uh, stone to be able to do it with. I could just do a little bit of clearing to try and uh, get some resources and then think about where I want to put it. Ideally, of course, you'd do it in one great big action, but you know, it's, it's early days. We don't have uh, many banners out. In future rounds, we will have cards tucked under here that will uh, give us uh, extra banners. One thing that we can also do is we have these six workers that my... Ed's covering up a bit, hey, they're not when I'm zoomed out, uh, that we can place uh, as elders over here. And for the rest of the round, we could get some bonus banners, so of a particular colour that we want. My particular one here gives me some bonuses as well. I could get myself an extra silver, an extra food, or an extra cinders as well as doing that. Other boards don't have that, but they also have different um, rewards on the flip side as well. Or they might have different costs. I think it's different flip sides, and this is the one with different costs. So I could, if I wanted to, boost my red banners so that the action I'm about to take, I would have uh, more banners to do it. Should we do something here? I think so. I might end up with no resources doing this. But let's go for it. Let's, yeah. Something out to boost my banners. So we'd have five red banners. So when you do something with your red banners, you can optionally place a Levite before or after your main action. Now, the number of workers that you've got here, these Levites, kind of determine the number of things you can do in the red section. 
you can see that we all start with one. I'm in the way again. Let's uh, let's go down here. <laughs> always in the my head's always in the way, and I've set these angles up. I wasn't here when I was setting them up. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I could pay two food. I do start with three. I think I'm going to do it. So I can do more than one thing here. So for every person that we have got out here, I've got two now, we can deliver a resource either to the construction of the temple, to keeping the altar burning. So I could do two things here, or I could spend one of the people to get me a, a temporary red banner just for this action. So I could have six. That, that would be a complete waste of time uh, to do uh, one thing and then to just make it a six, because there's nothing that costs six just on its own. Later on, we can get more of these people out. I also get an instant reward, which is another cinders. So I'll put that in my resource area. So the things that we can do, I do have a wood, so I could put this out uh, to help keep the altar burning. It would cost me three of my re uh, six red, three of my five red banners. It cost me my wood, and I would move two spaces along this altar track just like uh, the bot did on their turn. I have uh, keep up with them a little bit because that's the, that's the most that I can move from this action alone. There's loads of other ways to do it. You'll see it comes uh, from uh, bonuses and things. I can also contribute to the temple. So wood is also a factor here. I can contribute wood or stone or gold. I can get points for doing this. And depending on you know, the number of banners that I spend to put the resource out into the temple is the row that it gets placed in. And I can get different rewards from doing that. There's also rewards for the person that completes a column. And it's not just about columns. This is the one to two player setup of the temple. It's an extra tile that goes on top. It's for completing sections really rather than columns, I should say. It's just in a two player game, it's columns. You can see how it's different. And the rewards are a little bit different. So completing a column, the person who does the leftmost column uh, gets two food for doing that. And then whoever completes the middle column, whoever's got the most Levites gets two points. And in the rightmost column, it's you get a, a silver for every Levite that you've got. In the version with more players, as well as getting rewarded for having the most, you get punished for having the least. You don't in a two stroke one player game. There are ways of getting income each round. So there's like, there's loads of stuff that will come out from the scribe tiles that we can get, the scroll tiles. They will trigger all sorts of bonuses. Either when you do a particular thing, you will also get this reward. When this happens, it will also trigger like an extra action. All the ones on the top row are for scoring points but they can get us like more things in the like the Sabbath when we have to pay for stuff because we've got to feed our people. We uh, earn more resources and stuff. But there are like there are spaces on our board when the Sabbath comes along where we can place workers here and get some more food and money or some more resources down here. And there are different ways of like getting more automatic stuff as well. So I didn't make use of my singers trade here. I haven't got any gold, unfortunately. Could have gone for that. Could have gone for some clearing. Uh, getting some stuff out. Maybe I'll do that in the future. But uh, yeah, what shall we do then? So I'm I'm tempted. Like if I've only got wood though, like if I'm contributing to the altar, like this wood, then I can only really I can't c contribute to the temple because wood is the only thing that can go to the temple. I got excited about showing something off, and maybe it wasn't the best thing. But hey, it's all right. So I could spend. I could spend a whole five of my action points contributing the wood to the temple. That is all of my action points then, though, isn't it? Just getting an extra worker is absolutely lovely, and uh, I would love that. Oh, I don't think I have had my food, actually, Shem, thanks. I could just do the one thing. I don't have to do two things. I could just do that and get an extra person, and I'm set up for later on. But I think let's let's hold it in a little bit. Let's go to the temple with four of my five points. And I will do a tent move as well, which also gets me a red blessing. I advance this one on mine. And yeah, I don't get anything just yet. Uh, I get a point because what I built the temple with was wood. And then I've got one action point left. I'm going to spend one of my cinders to uh, move one space on the altar track, which gets me another food. 
So I've got three food again now. So that's it for my stuff. I've spent all of my red banners. I can't do anything else there, but we've made little bits of progress. So the bot now, we reveal their card here. And they are going to try. They can do this. So this is similar to how it's going to work on our card. See that the the card did say like a particular gate. Sometimes it's going to matter here. Like, look, I've, I've got the same thing here as I drop the money. Muster gate. And it's got a little symbol of the gate with a coin above it. This is just the way it'll work for me. So they need to pay the owner of that gate to do this trade and then they pay for the trade. So can they afford this? They've got the gold to put, they've got the silver to pay for the gate and then they've got two more to actually do the trade. They can't afford the five one, but yes, they can do it. So they're going to do it. So the coin for this goes to the owner of the gate. Now in another little twist, oh, that doesn't show the things, does it? In another little change for the one to two player game, a load of wall sections and two gates at the top of the board are pre-built, pre-done. They just, the, the supply owns those things. So the money paid to the owner of the gates just goes to the supply and goes away. And then the bot can pay two silver to get one of their workers from the main supply. Then we can look at their action now they've done the trade. So have they got two workers? Yes. Two gold? No. They are not sending a scribe out. Do they have two gold? Oh, I haven't revealed a new card. I wondered why that card seemed so familiar from the first one that they played. It's like, what are the chances of drawing that twice? Have they got two gold? No. Have they got zero to one workers? Well, no, actually. Now they've uh, just gained themselves one. Uh, so they are going to clear rubble and move along the altar track again. So the third space on the altar track doesn't get you anything, although there is... Has it come out this game? Yes. A scribe tile here. If you had previously done an action that's put one of your workers out here, every time you get to one of the golden flame spaces, you would get a food and a money rather than nothing. But it will help get into those uh, spaces as well. I think there's one of the scoring uh, cards for it. I should draw a card as well. It's the end of your turn. You should always have four cards to choose from. There you go. Every golden flame space you got to is worth a point. See, things, uh, things happen for a reason. So the bot clearing rubble. Where are they going to clear? They want to start at the muster gate and the arrow is pointing clockwise. So they're basically going to get to the first section with some resources there, some rubble still to be cleared. And they don't have banners, action points, any of this. They basically clear the space and get the resources like we would. But remember, whenever they would get non-gold resources, they get gold. So. They now have three gold to do things with. And when you completely clear a space of rubble, there's a little reward at the top, which is one of the blessings. So they get a purple blessing. So they are close to moving up the altar track one more time. And uh, yeah, that's what they're doing. So it's time for me to make some more decisions now. So we have got some more ways of getting some red action points. But having said that, all I could do with those red action points, I could I could afford to put another Levite out, which would give me a stone. So maybe it's not an altogether terrible idea, but it depends what I would do. So I could play the Carpenter over here. That would give me a couple more red banners. And if I can pay the owner of the Dung Gate, I could then either get a wood or a two more silver. That is most of my silver to oh, that is mine uh to get two wood and then i could do a bit of a decent action from it i would like clearing stuff out but then that would give me a gray for when i do clear stuff out and it'll be better i like the sound of that let's play the carpenter so i've now got three five seven red banners to be getting on with i need to pay the owner of the dung gate and you see that these unbuilt gates here have some money on them that's another thing for a two-player game i need to pay the owner of the dung gate who at the moment is nobody the person who builds the dung gate will now get three silver instead of two and i'm paying two more to get two wood i've covered the silver spaces with a player aid that wasn't very clever wonder where they went so we've got a lot of stuff that we can spend now what have we got seven do I want to put another Levite out? I've got food, but you do, you've do you got to pay for all of these people. You haven't got to pay for the Levites, actually. 
They're the only ones out on the wood you don't have to pay for. I've got a couple of gatekeepers, probably going to be putting more stuff out. So... I can't even spend that much anyway. So... What do I want to use? I want to use the wood at the altar to move a couple more spaces and kind of keep up and be in the in-between section. That'd be nice. And then we want to put a wood in the temple, don't we? Well, you'd only have... Oh, I'm counting the elder still. So I've got, I've got five again. So if we want to use three this time, we'd only be able to put someone in a two. Which would be okay still, wouldn't it? I could just do one thing, of course, and uh, just use this as like a temporary red banner. But do I want to put another one out? It would be burning through all of my food supplies. But I'd get a stone for doing it as well. And I could possibly boost to be able to do a better thing here. Or do three things. Three, just put a resource in the one row and do a cinders to move another space. Oh, do you know what? Let's just get it done. So, put another Levi out because I can. Should I? We'll see. I've got a stone now, which will make more temple in. Okay, but I've still only got five banners to do stuff with. Also, like I as could as I say, just do two things and say this is a banner, and I've got six. Definitely want to spend a wood at the altar. Move a couple of spaces, getting me a silver. So we've got two left. So I could either I could just spend I could spend one to give me the temporary red banner and move another two spaces by spending a wood not have to contribute to the temple anymore. It is a point for contributing to the temple. Oh, do you know what? I kind of like that more. I was, I was going to like go into the temple level one and do a cinders. But I've actually talked myself into, yeah, we'll use you as, you've put stuff out on the altar. You are giving me a temporary red banner and you are going to deliver another wood to the altar. I think. Oh, which gets me a gold as well. That's going to be helpful for all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I'm on board with this. So we get an orange blessing and a gold. Yeah, all we've done is altar work, but it's okay. We're in the lead. I don't think we'd stay there. He's got a load of stuff that he can do. But if we are in the lead at the end of the round, at the Sabbath, then we'll get a worker as well. We'd also get a worker if we got in front of him, but he's very far along. Like the other ones maybe don't give you as Good resources. We played with the one that the rulebook um, showed, actually, just randomly. Uh, and they were close together in the first one. So easier to get past and get the best reward, but the best reward wasn't as good. You know what I mean? If you get what I'm labouring over trying to say. So we've done a good trade. I'm pleased with that. That went better than the uh, spur of the moment decisions was leading me to believe. So the bot is going to the fish gate. You got one money, that's only enough to pay the gate mate. So he can't do the trade. He is going to move along his track and now he's got two more silver. He'll probably do something next time. And then he is gonna reveal a scheme card. So he is gonna do some copying off me. He's uh, coming over to my zone I think because has he got two workers? Yes. Has he got one gold? Yes. He is going to probably zoom in, but this doesn't show you the, the area where he's going. So he is going to pay a gold to play to Levi if he can and gain the row reward. Well, we know that that's why it's asking, has he got these workers and uh, a gold? Yes, he is going to do that. So he is going to pay one of his three gold. He's going to put one of those workers out as Levi, and the row reward is a cinders. But remember, whatever he gets, it's a gold to him. So pay a gold to place a Levi, if possible, gain the reward. And then for each one, he is either going to place a gold in the temple. Obviously, if, it's, if he's got gold, he's going to do that. Uh, or he would spend a silver to gain a gold or gain a silver. So he places in the lowest bit, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, you get two points uh, for placing gold, no matter where it is. 
So he's got two Levites. He is going to pop two things in there. Get another two points. And then for this row, his reward is another silver. Which is in a pot that, again, I keep covering up. And that's it. So he's placed in the temple and stuff. Got himself a Levite. And now, I haven't drawn a card. Right, it's not like I'm was thinking about my decisions, I was doing this turn through. Okay, we've got a lot of, I feel like the game's telling me, move on to the grey actions. I mean, we've all, we've got these banners now, I could. I've gained silver back, we can keep really going for that, if we really want to. Like, now I've got six red banners, I haven't got the food to put another Levi out, but that's three actions already. I haven't got wood this time, but I mean, there's one as well, I've got a bit of Silver. I couldn't afford to get two gold, but I could afford to get one. I've already got one. It's it's something to think about. But maybe we should pivot a little bit. We've got a lot of grey out here. And do some building instead. So other oh, I forgot that angle doesn't show you the <laughs> that angle zoomed in to not show you the building spaces. So we have to think of what what banners could I get? I could put this mason out that would give me four. I could put an elder out that would give me six. So the cost of clearing the stuff out is one if it's cinders, the, the black places. It would be two if it's stone or wood, or three if it's gold. I don't think I might be able to finish a temple sector. I'd be one short. Oh, because I'd need eight. Oh, yeah, because I've got the resources to do it, haven't I? Yeah, that would give me... That would give me six. And I could get a... Yeah, if I had the food to do it. If I can get the food somehow. One banner short of doing that. Because that would be nice. That would get me a couple of food as well. Ooh. So is there something I can clear off? Because one thing we can do as well... Like we can do this to try we could do this to do some kind of grey action with, and then it's still providing I don't know, we, we could just put this out and cover it up later is what I mean. If I drew another like nice red card to help out. Yeah, maybe place that too hastily. I should have waited. Like if we got three gold, we could flip it to its other side. Are we allowed to know? Well you'd know eventually from what the front was. But you like you can upgrade this as an auxiliary action. So doing the trade is an auxiliary action. Doing one of these development tiles is an auxiliary action as well. So the cost is over here. You get an immediate reward. This is take one of your elders back. Uh, and instead of just providing you the two banners of these three colors and those immediate rewards, it's now three banners of those colors. And this new option down the bottom, three of any banner. And some points at the end of the game as well. And there's some other things that reward you for having done development tiles. Okay, so yes, if we want to do some building, then I could have four to six things out. With the resources that I've got, I don't know that it's particularly possible, especially with only four to six banners, to clear it. Because you can, if you can afford to do it with your banners, Clear a space and build it at the same time. So there's the cost of clearing the cubes off. And then we have a resource cost and a banner cost to build one of the spaces as well. So just say, like, as an example over here, wood is two banners each. So four banners to clear those spaces out. You'd get the, um, you'd get the blessing. And you can stop there. You don't have to build them both in one go. But you can. So, you know, it's very tempting. So it would be four to clear it, and then another four, and these resources to build it. But you know, you've just cleared off two of the wood, so that's actually a, a decent combination to be uh, over there. So yeah, same goes with all of these. But the gates as well, so that's just a wall space. The gates are these spaces as well. You do have to have a worker to go out in the gates, but it gets you money, it gets you a little benefit right now in the little icon, and when someone builds a wall next to those gates, there is also uh, a benefit to be had as well there. And you want to build them because if people are doing trades, like the fish gate that didn't get done ultimately, but if it had, this would have built up with some money. If I'd built that fish gate, he'd be giving the money to me. So it would be nice. 
are building the building the valley gate. Oh yeah, the the valley gate. The bonus is bring your elder back. The same as on uh, flipping that card. And could we do that? Valley gate, valley gate. So easy to clear. So it would cost me five banners to do, which I could do with an elder. I would be short a. I can't think of the word. I'll be short a wood, but. You can spend three banners or a gold to remove a building requirement. So, you know, gold could be wild for the thing that you need. So I could build that gate. I'd get myself a couple of money out of it as well. I could bring my elder back to try and do, ooh, to try and get in on that as well. Because I could, yeah, rather than building up my greys to be massive early on, I could then replace it and I'd be able to do... the big red action, couldn't I? It'd be good to have a, a whole column in there as well. I like this. Idea. Would we have stuff to do that with, though? So we're placing him. I would need to spend wood, wood, and gold. I wouldn't then have the resources. Oh, we'd be doing this, so we'd have a cinder, but cinders doesn't help. You have also got over here as well. You can put um, you can put workers here, and I could either get two silver and a food, or I could get a resource. So that's anything but a gold and a food, and that can be upgraded as well. So there's more options. You could get yourself just a gold or move your tent, and all other things are better on the other side. So we could just try and build something next to something to try and get um, some rewards. Yeah, we're looking at we're looking at six. Is there something I could build with six? It'd have to be. I could build another gate, but that wouldn't really help, would it? It'd get me a little bit more money. Just I'd be building a gate, but spending all of my resources. But if I can keep some money, if I put this out to be able to do the temple, that would get me a stone and a wood. So then I could have the resources. Should we do it? So put an elder out here. So we have got three, four, six grey banners and a cinders. Storage is stocking up. Let's build the valley gate. Let's see how this goes. This bad boy turns out. So we need two of those six to clear the space. There's no blessing for the, the gate spaces. But hey, we're... we're Going to put a gate down, and it's four points for having this gatekeeper out. So two to clear the space, and you, you have to target one space with your action as well. So despite having action points left over, you've targeted a space to be the clearing stroke building bit. I can't just you know clear a cinders from somewhere else. Let's put that valley gate out. That's worth four points to me now. I get this two money. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get um, two pairs of it, but still, it's... Uh, it's decent, I think, for what I want to do. I could even, instead of playing him, if I only need five, I could play the lookout instead. And then I could turn a cinders into a... I could turn both of the cinders into two money. If I want to be able to buy these resources instead... One, two, three, four, five... I would only need to sell one. Well, that's a point, isn't it? And we could save the mason for later if we did want to build that up. I'm gonna... We could buy another gold right now. We could use this card. That is one of the cards I've got with the red on it. I'm locking in the action that I'm doing. I'm not changing that. I could just with two of that money buy a gold and I'd still have the money to do the muster gate thing. There's the east gate. That's a that's a bot controlled thing. Yeah. So pay a money to the east gate and then a money for a gold. I'm fine with that. And then we'll be able to afford to do the other one in a bit. We'll still have the cinders for later. Yeah, I'm happy with that. As you can see though, we're in that people. So building the valley gate, we get to bring an elder back. 
Yeah, they've got three gold to be able to do that. Oh, but I need to pay my two stone and a gold to actually put it down. I'm going to get four points at the end of the game. And now, you can see on the gates, they've got these little resources at the top and the, the pre-printed gates we started with. If someone builds one of these wall spaces, whoever builds that wall space, I get that. Also, the person building the wall space gets it. If it's the same, if it's the same person, so if I build a wall next to it, I only get the thing once. So, you know, everybody benefits if the bot decides to build a wall there. And I would like to be the only one benefiting for everything, really. Yes, so I think after a lot of back and forth, that's what we're sticking with. And then we're going to, let's be honest, be gutted when the bot finishes the temple for us right now. What are you up to? The dung gate. How much money has he got? Four. So that's not quite enough. He's got to pay a money to the dung gate, which is still, it's this unbuilt one, isn't it? Yes. It's still unbuilt, so it's got another silver on it now. But then he can pay one, whoop, that money that's rolling everywhere to get a gold. Then, has he got two workers? No, nope, I haven't drawn a card yet. That's last time. I'm getting ahead of myself. Has he got one worker and two gold? He has. Okay. So he wants to build the dung gate. You're in luck. He's got that. So first of all, it's the same as what he did when he cleared a space off. So he clears it of resources and gets that many gold. And then to build, he spends three gold to build the target gate or wall. Drop it out. So he's building the dung gate and it's a bit of a shame because he's getting a nice profit out of doing that. Popping that down. Placing a gatekeeper, which moves his tent, which gets him a gold. No connections made, so if the walls already existed, and then he put the gate down, he'd get the connections from them as well. Okay. Has he had everything from that? I think so. So he spent a lot of his stuff, but he's now got loads of gold to do a trade next time. Right, he hasn't, though, built in the temple. So I think what we're going to do is... Stick with the plan. So the gatherer, the muster gate is just owned by the game. And then we'll pay one to get a wood and a stone. We've got three, five, seven, eight, nine. And that gets me a, a food as well. Red banners. I cannot afford to put a new Levite out. But we've got more than enough, basically. I do I want to save the gold? I'd like to build up and replace the tiles. I'd like to save the wood to be doing this later. Should I want to? Let's we're definitely gonna put a stone in here. That's three of them. And get a food. And then let's whoa. Let's hang on to the gold. Now, I might want to go up the altar track, spend the gold, get the points. So it's going to be three points in total. And that gets me a worker. Which we might really want. And we are the person that completed this column, unbelievably. So I get two food from that as well. Because, yeah, as we build these things up, we're going to start with six workers. We have put some out as Levites. So you've got to pay your gatekeepers two five, seven, I think I've got to pay at the moment. And I've got four food to do it with. But that's uh, that's a few turns away yet. That was turn number four, wasn't it? So draw back up. Oh, we've got some more red coming in now. And then the bot. I want to get some uh, scribes out. I don't know why I'm turning both. The valley gate is his target. Has he got enough money to buy two gold here? One for the valley gate. Where's that? That's, uh, oh, it's the one I built. He's giving me a silver. Great. Not so great. He's then going to spend four more silver to get uh, two gold. Has he got to work? No, that's the one from last time. Every single turn, that's going to happen, isn't it? Has he got a worker and one gold? No. Has he got two or more gold? Yes. So, he's going to spend two gold to get himself a worker and move two up the altar track. I think I'm still further forward, right? It's the one on the bottom is further forward. But he is going to get an orange blessing and then a gold. Gold, orange blessing, which gives him another altar. It doesn't matter because he's now ahead of me. 
Let's get points and silver from the. What have I missed? Did I not take my silver? There's a bit of lag, so I might not be uh, getting it. What did I do? The gold from the bot, and then it's me. Think about what I'm doing. Catch up on what I've missed. So we've kind of done the temple stuff. I could, I'm behind on the altar now, so. I kind of want to get back in there. I mean, the cards are kind of leading me towards red again. I've only got one thing that could go in the temple, though. Unless there's something that could get me more stuff here. There's, there's something that could get me a nice amount of food. The scholar could get me a bit of stone. Like we could try something with a scholar here. That would be three points, which is enough. I've got two silver. Ooh. Yeah. That could be something good. Oh, I stopped after column one, didn't I? Uh, so I've got the most Levites. And then we get a coin for Levites. So did that... He already bought two gold, yes. So that doesn't change what he did. Thanks, Shem. So I've got a bit more... money to play with. Or five. So I could buy a load of food here. Put in... It's tempting to put this out and put a scribe out. And I, I should do it just to show you what it is. Good idea or not. Or I could spend the red points to move my tent about. I could also use it to get some stone and then just go right back to the temple. Or putting it in the... altar. Next time, we've got one more action after this, haven't we? How much money have I got? Valley gate is me, so I don't need to pay the gate money. Let's do that. So two money to get two stone, sounds like a deal to me. Make sure you can get the food. I think I can get the food. Hope I can get the food. Uh, and then, so I've done my trade, and then I've got three blue banners so with the blue banners we can move our tent about three blue banners is just going to get me one tent movement which is a couple of coins that's nice but now i'm going to spend the three here i'm going to spend two coins and let's put a scribe out so it's a worker just trying to work out can i afford to put <laughs> how many workers have i got can i afford them oh the hero card as well yes that's why i was doing that Right, yes. So the the scribes over here We've talked about all of these will get us like immediate benefits and all of this stuff. Oh, why? Like, I really went for scribes in the last game that we played and really enjoyed having the hero cards from the beginning and these various powers that kept popping off. I haven't done that yet, but we can put a scribe on one of these spaces. So I've paid me three banners, me two money. We can choose one of the heroes to pop our scribe on. And benefits of this, later on, when people want to put scribes out, they need to trace a path from the bottom. And if they're tracing a path through your scribes, you get a silver for everyone they have to do that through. Obviously, the bot will try not to do that. Uh, and you also get a hero card of the corresponding type. Well, the same one that you pop in your scribe on. And this gives you a banner permanently of that color for the rest of the game and some immediate benefits. And to be honest, the one that gives me two food. And red is what I'm great at. Yeah, let's do that. So the white meeples that are here are basically for a two-player game. You can build off them. You pay the money to the bank. But you can also go in their space. So I'm going to do that. 
they get displaced to the next one up, always going outwards. And there are rewards, you know, there's more points for having your scribes higher up. Uh, the, there's points at the, the top row, uh, but also the first person to build on each row can have the food that's there, one, two, and three food stacked up. But I'm going to go here, and Zerubbabel is going to get tucked under my player aid here. There's more things will be later. And before doing that, hadn't you better have the immediate things? Yes. So I'm going to get two food, I'm going to get a gold, and I'm going to get a blessing of my choice. I will choose purple, because now we've got a column of them, and I can move up the altar track, which gets me nothing immediately. But if we can do another red action, which I'm very tempted to do now, then, uh, yeah, we've got, we've got, we've got some gold to put in the temple. I have got the food to put another Levi out, but I think it would be a bad idea considering we need to feed the people in the Sabbath. Okay, I need to draw a card and we're going to have one more action. I've got a teacher. I haven't got two money that I could turn a food into two money. <gasps> And then I'd have three to put another scribe out, which could... It, that's uh, your scribes don't need to be fed in the Sabbath. I mean, that would be a couple of people that didn't need feeding. Something to think about next time. Oh, I had all of them. What was the third thing I had? Okay, so I, I do need to go to the altar. I do need to go to the altar. We'll go next time. Let's do the bots. Um, let's do the bots turn. Right, are we on the bot? Watergate. He's got three money. So one goes to the Watergate, which hasn't been built yet. And then one goes... Oh, he's going up the altar again. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll see it eventually. There's, there's a bit of a... There's a lag between me seeing stuff. Uh, I think I've done it now, haven't I? So, he's moving again and getting a purple blessing. And then... You see when it's the end as well, because he's done all of his cards. Has he got a worker and two gold? Yes. Get out here. So a gold to put a Levite out. It's time, you know. He gets a stone, which turns into a gold. And then he uses each one to either put a gold into the temple, which he's going to do, isn't he? So you go in there, you go in there and get him a money. That's four points in total. One, two, three, four. And then he's got one more action. He turns a silver into a gold. I think that's what he does there. Okay, so... Let me shuffle in his cards while I'm thinking. So I was gearing up for another red action. We could, I was tempted by the scribe, though, wasn't I? The teacher that came out... We would have six blue. It's five to go up there. We could turn a food into a bit of money and get a power. Every time you put a scribe out, you get a blessing. And they're all nice things to have. In the Sabbath, you don't need to pay your farmers or your workers. You don't need to feed them. We'll put an elder out, we'll get you an extra two banners of any colour and a silver. That's quite nice, but it's not built towards. Or the temple, like... This is the last thing before the Sabbath. We can get in front of him. We can maybe get in front of him. Yeah. Yeah, let's do a red thing. Okay. Musician. You go over there. Oh, I don't have the money. I don't think I'm about to gain the money to be able to um, get a load of food. It would be nice because then I could uh, get another Levite out, get another action out of this. What have we got? Three, four, five, six, seven red banners right now. And potentially three actions. So I do have... What's the total of workers? You can work it out. There's a total number of workers minus your Levites and minus the... Workers that are in the supply. 16, that's the one. So 16 minus Levites. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. 7 food I need. And I've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm planning on using him as a farmer to get me the missing 2. 
So I can't, I can't afford to... Another Levi out. We can't do that. I'm trying to convince myself that... No, you'll be able to do it. No, we're spending four. You can't do it. So... Yeah, you're just going to have to have three things. I've put it in. I've already done that slot. So we're going to have to have... Oof. Does that change things? We'd have to only have five. Yeah, because we want to go... You could just do three, four, five. Yeah, that's that's what you're going to have to do with the resources that you've got. You're going to have to be all altar all the time, I think. But what's wrong with that? Three, four, five. Wait that out properly, have not? Yes. So we are going to go for two at the altar. One, two. Gets me the purple, which gets me another altar, actually. Which gets me a food. Oh, don't tell me we could have afforded now. One from the cinders. Which is nothing. And then another one from the cinders. So we definitely passed. I think we'd passed as soon as we went into that golden flame. But good to be up there as well uh, and get me a red blessing and i think yeah we draw a card which shows like that's it so i think we are entering now the sabbath okay there's the solo sabbath oh yeah here's my player board so remember all of your stuff so for me that is making sure that i've got um the food for the people we worked out that I needed seven. I've got two, four, five, six. I have got seven. If I'm okay going into the next round with nothing, I could go and get either two resources or a resource and two money, which having no resources, I'm kind of feeling like. It's always nice to have a bit of food, though. You could just... Oh yeah, we are going to, like, we resolve the Prophet's judgments as well, so. They can be placed on something. Ooh. Yeah, because the Prophet's judgment at this time happens to be a new worker that we've just whizzed in front of, but you've got to pay them. You're gaining a person that's got to be fed, so somebody's got to farm. And get a money. And that's different on the other playboards as well. There's one of the one of the tiles. I need to pay eight money, eight food now. One of the tiles has got like a permanent ability where you can turn money into food. And this permanent, like if you upgrade it, this one uh, permanently would give you two food at the start of each Sabbath. But it's five cinders to upgrade. I've squandered a lot of my resources. Should we get some resources and things? Maybe we want to do some building. We want to lean into that. Maybe we want to get some resources to be able to do this stuff. If you want to clear some things out, build next to like your valley gate. You could put him here, get two wood, try and make that one of your first actions, but we don't know what we're going to get in terms of cards and things. Yeah, you go there, get me two wood. I like the sound of that. Okay. Yeah, you're going to be a farmer. You're going to be a labourer. <laughs> yeah, I need someone to remind him. That's the problem with the... Uh... Well, minimum on my own. I've got to just catch them all later. Right. So we've had the Prophet's Judgment for me, which is, hey, you did dead well. Get a good reward. I've used my farmers and labourers. I like, it'd be really great to get that upgrade. It's expensive, three gold, but getting to bring one of these guys back and getting them working for you is a lovely little benefit. Uh, the bot is just resolving the Prophet's Judgment. He's between them, which gets him a tent move. I haven't really moved my tent up, which is another purple blessing, which didn't get him um, any more stuff. So, move on. Sabbath, pay a food per worker. So that's going to be eight now, isn't it? Because I just gained one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is basically every worker I have minus the Levites. So that's eight of them. And now... It tells us after the first Sabbath, you're going to tuck one card. Second Sabbath, two cards. Third Sabbath, one more card. This is for scoring and banners. So they are one of the cards that I have played in this round, in this week. At the same time, I am losing the lovely things that are on that card. So in terms of its scoring right now, I've gone past three 
golden flames. Got one orange blessing. A point plus every scribe. I've only got one scribe, so that's two points. I've got one purple blessing. I haven't done any development tiles, so that'd just be one point. Levites. We've got three. But that's losing your triple... Your triple red banner. And the singer's trade was good, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, so... Well, if I had gold, it would be good. The Carpenters is probably more useful for keeping me going in the temples and stuff, but there's other ways of getting that. That'd be a permanent red banner. I think I'm going to go Carpenter. I don't want to lose any red banners, but also we've got to move on to do other things as well. We did a lot of templing and a lot of altering. Skip all the way to the end of the altar and then you don't have to worry about it again. But probably <laughs> we'll have done nothing else for the rest of the game. So I've tucked me worker. Uh, by the way, if you can't pay your, if you can't feed your workers, you lose two points per one that you didn't pay or chose not to feed. Uh, took the required character card and score all of them. So we have gone past three golden flames. So that is one, two, three points. And the bot scoring does some special things. He gains a silver for every worker that he's got here. He gains points equal to the value of his highest scribe, the rose value. He haven't put a scribe out yet. He gains a point per gatekeeper. He's got three of those. Started the game with two and he built that gate. So three points for his gatekeepers. One, two, three. Scribes, none, or Levites, oh, of which he had the most. So it's three. I'd already counted that. Uh, and then a point per wall he's built. He hasn't built no walls. He's been fighting with me on the altar. I'm not happy about it. Uh, and uh, a point per golden space he's gone past, which is only two for now. This is not a lot better than me, but mine will build up. If we were playing on the two-star difficulty, he would have started with more things, so got to do more things. Uh, and he would gain victory points equal to the row values of his highest two scribes. And he would just gain a point per thing rather than just the highest thing, including his uh, rightmost blessing space counts towards that as well. Okay, after the Sabbath, we just shuffle all of his uh, things. And after the Sabbath, for me, we need to move the profits. So rather than three and nine, they are now on six and 11. So I've only got to move one more space to get in front again for another worker. Oh, and I need me... Oh, it's going to tell me now. Retrieve all workers from your player board. So we've got four to play with. And the altar leader gains a new worker. Thank you very much. And shuffle me kept carts. Do that in a minute. Yeah, these are good shuffle. And now... I'm first player. He's gonna be he's gonna be first player twice. So I mean the plan to get two wood and build next to here, doable in it. What do I need? Six. Grey. How is that doable? It's not doable. You could probably like just put him out and clear some cubes somewhere else. And then next time when you put another card out, you would be able to do that in one go. That one's great there. It costs a lot. Two, four, six, nine. But it gives you the three stone you want to build that space. Because yeah, just clearing things would be okay. Ideally, you'd want to spend all of your action points. Like, if you're going to put the three out there... We could do some good teaching as well, but I haven't, I haven't really got money. I want to build up some more money for that. I could sell me wood for two money each over here with the lookout, but... Zoom in so you can see uh, the fourth card. In Mason. I mean, we could just clear out you know, a space that just costs three action points. Like, and then... We'd get the red blessing.
which is the blessing we don't need, but this space I picked had uh, three action points worth of stuff. That one over here would get me a purple blessing. Or I could just take something with a gold. Gold's three action spaces. <sighs> I like that a lot better. Mason, you go out. Downside of that is you haven't got stone to spend for two money each, which would be lovely. And if you cleared this space off, you could just spend that stone, get a couple of money. I could get Nehemiah. That would give me a stone. To have stuff later, put stuff back that you've been playing with. And it's a grey banner, isn't it, as well? So you'd be able to do things that cost four. Or clear, like, up to four's worth. And boost it with that, and then you'd have six. I suppose we'd only need three blue to do it. All right, whenever you say something, Sherm, I'm going to take your suggestion. We've got food, haven't we, to turn into money? We'll need the food later, but for now... Yeah, you go out. Teacher, spent food for two money. Glad I got that food now. Two money. Three blue banners. Let's scribe out. Another point at the end of the game. Be nice uh, to get more. Yes, I'm just checking and put it on the right one. So that gets me a stone. And the banner as well. Is it? Is it? It's not. Oh shit, she already said it. A stone and a gold. So it'd be nice for that to be the blessing as well, wouldn't it? So even better. Maybe I could do better things with my building now. That's a job for future Tom though. Right. Up here. Valley Gate. He's only got one money, so he's doing now with that. Has he got a worker and two gold? No. Two gold? No. He gets a worker and moves up two on the altar. Clear off my altar. He's got a food. That's all he's doing for now. Try to take my altar leader off me. Quick. Cancel everything and do reds. Right. We're going to... Yeah, I only got two money. I can't do it. We could, like, these things will be out for us to do more scribing. So yeah, stick with what you were going to do, which was, remind me, Mason, three, four, five, six, and get me some cinders. And I can clear you off for two, spend another four to build it as well. So you get me a red blessing, which I know isn't desperately what I needed. Maybe we could build up and do all of that in one go. Gets me the red blessing. Spend three wood to build this bit of wall. And, hey, doing it late, but I get to show you building a wall. You draw three cards from this deck. And you decide what uh, immediate bonus you would like. Would we like three money, two food, one stone? We've put the guy out that lets us sell stone for two money. Mm, I kind of want to hang on to resources, but at the same time, that's too much for Quincy. It's two points as well for doing the, the wall at the end of the game. And then we decide one of these goes on the top of the deck and one's going on the bottom. Food, money. I could have had three money, though, rather than getting a stone and selling it for two money. Fair point. Save that. Put the money down. Get three money. If you'd wanted the stone for stone, it would have been a different matter. We will put the stone on top, food on the bottom. Might regret that. Okay. And I've built next to the valley gate, which is there. 
And since I built the wall and owned the gates, we only get the reward once. So that is a food and a money. And we've got now, is that six money? We could potentially, if we wanted to right now, we can afford to flip that over. Unlimited resources, we'd immediately get a tent, which is two more money back. So that's a, that's a discount effectively, isn't it? And we would also get something in the harvest. Yes, you get to bring an elder back um, every Sabbath. Before, like, the feeding's done. Let's do it. Six spence. We get a tent move, which gives us two money. So we've got two again. Maybe big heads in the way of the... Now the gates have been built. Resources could be over here, couldn't they? Gives me stuff. Well, and some are over here. So unlimited space for this. Two points at the end. And in the Sabbath, we get a, a thing back. Do I want to sell that stone for two more money? What am I going to do next time? Probably going to put you out so I would have six points. Oh, seven would let me do that one. That's not connected to a wall. Can you do anything with seven? Four, six, seven, yes. Do that and that one's three white, so white white gold to do it could be done and i get a gold back yes maybe that's what we'll do next time i'm not going to sell the stone have i did it with no have i not been drawing cards i've put one somewhere else i don't think i've been drawing cards because i'm so stuck in my ways so stuck in the plan that i was doing and i can't trade because i flipped a time The old gate. He hasn't got three money, so he can't do that. He's got one money, so he's going to move his tent in. Right in my way. I don't know why I'm giving him food as well. He should be having money. So he would have had two money. He's now got four money. We could maybe do it next time. And has he got a worker and two gold? No. Not to one workers? Yes, he gets two. Okay. Oh, it's because I was putting... Spoilers, a singer's coming. It's because I was putting a gate up, a card up prematurely, planning a turnout. Yeah. So, the thing that I had worked out was... 3, 5, 6... Four. That's seven. Okay, I worked something out, but I can't add up, apparently. I thought I had seven somehow. Three, five, six. No, you've got six. Okay, so we can't build that thing and do some more profiting off walls and such. Anything kind of cheap? I mean, the thing that doesn't get you like a bonus, because it isn't next to a gate, you'd still get the bonus off one of your wall cards. You'd clear it, you'd get an orange blessing. Two, five, so oh, that's seven. And there's points at the end for building these walls and things as well. I thought I had that all planned out. Could do something, you know, with... How much money have we got? I've only got two money. I mean, I could get the final carrots card. I've got, I've got two money to do it. Wouldn't be able to do any of the trading. Wasting that a bit. But we'd have five. Just not got the money to get up here. But I'd have three to get another character, which would be a cinders and a gold. Two gold towards this. And we would have two to... <gasps> Do it. Yes. We're going to put a scribe out. Three blue banners. I'm going to get Ezra. <laughs> Not move. Stay on the bottom row. But hey, you're going to have to go through me to trace a path. If he ever scribes, we get a cinders and a gold. We could potentially, 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 flip this over with three gold here. Done that, done that. So that's three of me five. 
Another two moves me tense. It's three gold. Very powerful to have. I mean, if we could get a load of red. I mean, that's perfect in the temple, isn't it? But that could be spent right now. We could bring this elder back and flip that to its super powered side. Which I'm very tempted by. We wouldn't be able to do the build we were thinking of earlier. Maybe we could do a better build. And it's upgraded, so what would it do? Oh yeah, it's more on all of the banner things. And there's a kind of an extra way of boosting the same thing as before. We get to bring that dude back. Just it's, a, it's a hefty cost when I haven't got a lot of stuff. But we're going to be doing some building and getting more stuff. You'll find something you can build. Do it. Flip it over. Three gold spent. The immediate benefit was to get a Elder back. Two more points at the end. And maybe the developments... You know, points from Gatherer, a bit more attractive now. Okay, a bit more scribing, a bit of tenting done. Then, Bot, at the horse gate, he's got money, so I imagine he's doing stuff. One, two, three, four. Yes, he can afford that. Four money gets him another purple blessing. He loves them. Can't get enough of them. And he moves his tent, which gets him a worker. And then his scheme is going to... Always pressing, up, always checking. I press the right button. He's got two workers. He's got a gold, so he is templing. So let's see. He spends a gold to put a Levite out. Oh, he's ahead now. He hasn't got much gold though, which is good. So he spends the gold to put him out, and now gets a gold back for that resource. And then he's got four things to do here. Hi, Rach. Hello. Had a bit of it. It's Marty on his radiator still. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So he spends a gold out in the temple, which gets him a bread, which is a silver. I'll show you his resources as well at the same time. That's one done. Then he can turn a silver into a gold now that he's just gained a silver. And for his third one, put him out, which lets him go along, which gives him an orange blessing. And then his fourth one, can't put a gold out, can't turn a silver to a gold, so gains a silver. I think I've done that right. So a red action now. I mean, it wasn't the plan. He's only got one coin. Have I got time to do me build first? Because I've, I've got this stone that I could put in the temple. Cinders could go in the altar. Finish that column. I wouldn't be able to get more Levites than him, though. Still got a bit of money. I'd get a person for putting someone in that row as well. It is some more, more people to feed. Oh, it's tempting. Do we do that? Or continue with the build idea, having three, four, five, six, seven, potentially ten. What would that cost? Three, five, seven, nine. I mean, we could do this build. Purple Blessing isn't anything right now. But it's leading towards something. Another food, another coin. It doesn't seem so exciting now that I'll lay it out. Finishing the temple seems more exciting, but it would seem a lot more exciting if I could get the food out to do it. I'd be putting that out, turn gold into money, which didn't get me anything. I mean, you could put someone... I've got no money at all, though. Well, you've got a worker. You can get a couple of money right there. Get a resource. Who really wanted it. And some food as well. Mustergate. Okay, we have to pay for that. Who owns the valley gate? That's me. And that gives me loads more blue. 
It's just this kind of keeps up the grey. So we could maybe do a build in a bit. Yeah, putting an elder out isn't so off-putting because I can bring at least one back. So ideally I'd want to do do I want to do more temple stuff by putting this out because it's like it's out permanently, isn't it? It's going on top of something. Potentially hampering my building efforts. If I waited, I wouldn't get the two food. Is there a way of getting food immediately? No. Well, you can go up here and get one. But it's not going to give you the four that you need. To get back on the Levite track. That's another red, which I don't... Oh, it's a coin next. Probably not moving three spaces. Because then it's there in another flame. I've just seen that the temple's available and gotten excited. This lets me keep my options open, I think. So I've got one, two, three. Six and a food. I don't think I'm going to get to do three things. Do I want to get two money so I can do the trade as well? Rough. I could. Yeah, not having to pay the scribes. I'm not far away from that. I could sell a couple of coins and stuff. Like, my blues are still out. I could do that. I could abandon the builds. I've put myself off them a bit. Because that's still a blue, and I could just put, like, the scholar or something out next time. And then I'd have, what, what do I have? Two, three, four, five, six. But you're spending the money that you're thinking of getting. Will I earn money from doing this? Yes, from the Levites. <gasps> so we've only got six. I'm not going to do the trade. Five of the red banners go here and get me a worker. And a point. We finished this thing. Two food. He gets two points, sadly. And he gets four. Oh, really helping him, actually. I've really turned against my own idea. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this idea anymore. I still get three money. And then I've got one red banner left to move another space, which is another money. I'm putting a cinders in there. I mean, if you'd want to spend all of your food on this, no, I wouldn't have had the food to put the Levi out. I've only got that food now because the temple was finished. Never mind. Oh, you, you can do it afterwards, though. Yeah, you could put a Levi out if you want. It's just that it's already scored now. You get a wood. And then loads of things to do next time. Mm, I want to. I'm not going to. No. I feel like I've really helped him there. Probably got five money. Two, three, four, five. Yes, he has got five money. That's spent on two workers. 
And has he got two workers and two gold? No. Has he got two gold? No. He gets a gold, and annoyingly for me, going two on the altar, clear off. Gets a red blessing, which gives him another altar. So that was two, and then a coin. And then he's getting another one, which puts him on the golden one ahead. Oh. Okay. Yeah, not having to pay for scribes would be good. And we've got the money now. So let's do this. And that gives me a red as well if I wanted to sing her and put all stuff out. So we need three money for the scribe. I own the valley gate. So I don't need to pay the coin. I can just do the trade to get a stone from that. We've got, what, two, four, five, six. Oh, that's annoying. We could put an elder out. To get nine. Oh yeah, let's do that. And a coin. Because then you could pay two coins to get two stone. I wish it was wood. For putting in the old altar. So you've got two cards. So the last card's going to go there. I should have another card. No, nah, we'll just have one stone. No, I want to pay for two stone. RH. Yeah, scribe out here. You don't have to pay for any more scribes. And a food. We've been the first one in that row. You don't have to pay food for your scribes, but it does lose me a point, unfortunately. A lot of the other ones gave me points. And we've got... Two, four, five, eight, nine. So I've spent five of them. The other four are going to be on Templin. You can get me a purple blessing. You can get me two food. So we're looking at the food. 16, 13, 12, 11, 10. I need 10 food, but nine, eight, seven, six food because of that. And I've already got two, four. I've already got six. So we don't have to worry about that. If I was to do red next time, it would just be with stone. Have a think. Okay, bot. What are you up to? Fish gate. He's got no money, which means he's going to be tenting. Oh, he's getting off the altar. <sighs> I haven't got the stuff. I am ahead of the profits. I wanted to be the leader. Right. That's just that. And then... Has he got two gold? No. Has he got not to one worker? No. So he's going to clear rubble, starting from the fish gate. Well, you can clear rubble from the fish gate. And will he do... Will he, he'll just do the... He will do the fish gate space, won't he? He won't skip to the next wall, will he? There's a bit of lag, so I'll leave that stone out there just in case he would go to the first space so he could get the blessing. And he goes, I've already put him on the altar. Have I? Yes. Have I put him on the altar? Right. So the most we can go is one space up the altar. So it's, it's not worth looking at from that perspective. He should skip. Let's get these instead. Update to rules. He gets them instead, which gets him a blessing. Done. Okay. Have I moved him on the altar? I don't think I've moved him on the altar. Oof. Yeah, if I had wood and stuff, and there is not a card that gets me wood here, to be able to, there is a, I don't think it's out in our game, but there is one of the scroll cards that lets you use trades from other cards that you've played rather than the one you played this turn. So we haven't got money, so a lot of these become unattractive. I don't really want to sell stuff, so the trade is not a factor here. We could just do some grey, clear out some stuff, do some building. 
I mean, the card's going here though, isn't it? So the best build you could do would be three, four. I'm going to do yet another Elder Seven, which isn't a lot. I haven't got gold to be putting a scribe out at a higher level, which is good. It's another person that doesn't need feeding. I could get some other power for doing stuff. It'd be nice. Templing, we do have the two stone that I got. And how much temple could we get? Three, five, seven. Again, could be ten if you want to go up there. Can't put another Levite out again. With seven, we could get a tent move, which is a person. And it's points for doing that. I've just got this feeling that building is going to be better. How much money? Because I could get two money from this, but the cheapest scribe is three. So that's a no-go. So I can get another person. I suppose I could, I could try and build a gate. Give me some money to do stuff. Could get me a blessing, which would be a temp move, which would be a person. How much would it be to build the water gate? Three. It's only five. But I haven't got the wood to do it, unfortunately, the way the cubes have come out. And that's now cleared, but I don't get the blessing and stuff. It's only a few action points to do it. I mean, doing two things in the temple isn't too bad. You could use some of the action points to go a bit up the altar as well. Just... Shame I've lost my lead. Do some red. It'll make you feel better. So what have we got? Three, five, seven. Could be ten. And I can do three things. There wouldn't be an immediate benefit to doing it. You get two more people. Admittedly they'd need feeding, but they could be farmers. Go for it. So, I've got ten. Five there. Point. Get me a person. Four there. Get me a tent. Get me a person. Cinders with the last one. Gets me nothing. But, <sighs> good about my lead. And he's still got another turn. So I haven't got a card to draw because we lost a card. So... His last go. East Gate. He's got two money. Does anyone own the East Gate? No, that's one of the ones pre-printed on the board. So, spends the money. He gets a gold. Has he got two gold? Yes. He's going to build a bit of wall. Starting from here and going anti-clockwise, he is going to build this bit of wall. So he clears this off and gets two gold. He's got a lot of gold. And then he spends three, doesn't he, no matter what? Yeah. Then he spends two, three gold to build the target wall he just builds the top thing off his deck oh, i said altar well he's uh he's rinsed me on that gain rewards and wall but he's built it next to my sheep gate he's gonna get three points for doing that wall uh, so he's built that next to the sheep gate because i am the gatekeeper and he is the wall builder he gets the reward three coins and I get the reward, three coins. It's three coins because that's what's printed on the sheep gate. He's helped me a bit there, I suppose, but after I've done all my actions. You know, I'm not turn one of his cards over at some point. We've had six actions each, haven't we? I haven't been planning out a card and not done a thing, have I? 
we've done six things each. I'm pretty sure we just spotted that. I've probably just read a card again and repeated something. No, I've 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 done I've done that this turn, haven't I? I haven't flipped a card. Well, you know how it would work, should it happen. We found my mistake. So there we go. There's that reset. We know he'll get an altar movement when he does build a wall. He has got a person and a gold. So he's going to build the scribe in the place he can build in the lowest section. So that is going to be one of these three spaces. He's going to pay me a silver to do it. So what helps do his decision is the, the card can always be divided up into sections. So if he's got to decide between two things, you can just divide the card in half and see where the active thing is. Same for four. There's four columns of it. What was it for three? It's going to be blindingly obvious, isn't it? When I look this up. It's late. Oh, it's the edges and then the middle. So yeah, if it was here, it would do the left thing. Here it does the middle thing. Here it would do the right thing. It's going to go in the middle spot. Here. So he places a scribe, paying gold equal to the row height. So he's going to place a scribe in that spot. It's the second row, so he's paying two gold to do it. And he's gone through one of my scribes. He's had to branch off, so I gain gold from the supply. He doesn't pay at me. And they must pay a silver to use white workers. Oh yeah, they gain the hero cards. No hero cards to gain, he's just kind of blocking space and he'll earn some points from that as well. So he's done scribe. There we go. At least I didn't mess up his uh, turns or anything. So, the preparing for Sabbath, the prophet's judgment is going to be rewards for both of us. So gaining a person, that's uh, my last one actually. I can definitely afford to pay him because he can go out as a farmer. Uh, when you can't gain people anymore, whenever you would, you would get a tent instead. And if you would ever gain a blessing and you can't gain that blessing anymore, you get a tent instead. Uh, when he has surpassed both the prophets, he gets a blessing. When he chooses a blessing, he chooses the one he's got the least of. If there's a tie, top to bottom. So he's going to choose an orange. And a point. Yes. So we've done the profits, and then I need to decide on my farmers and laborers. So one of my elders can come back, and I've got four people to do stuff on. So we have now got 16, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine food to get, and we have six. So we've got to have two farmers to get me the food we need plus an extra. Got two people that could be getting resources instead. Get up this altar track. Take that back. You can get a person now. I says things are shuffled. Me stalling. We're thinking time. It will be nice to have food and put more Levites out and do There's not going to be as much to do over here yet. Right, go here. And get two wood. And then go here again. And get two wood. Done. Decided. Right. So that's the pre Sabbath. Sabbath, pay food for my workers. Already worked out that I've got it. Haven't not fed anyone. Took two character cards though. So, three Levites. I've done two developments now, so that's worth three. Uh, points equal to your highest two scribes. That would only be three. Actually, I haven't gone very far up with the scribes. Red Blessings, I've got three. Number of scribes, that's probably one I need to get out into. I've got four scribes right now, so that's a five-pointer. So that's got to be one. 
it's also it's putting blue banners out encouraging me to well having the scribes is encouraging you to do more as well having the the scoring you can't see all new banners no more we've got to choose something else though that was played what am i likely to do well scribes it's just that's your that's your triple blue if you give that up now it's not scoring much now though I'm more inclined. Building walls. What have I done that once? Yeah, we're not going to be that. Developments. Am I going to do more of that? Well, you could do one immediately. With this four wood. It's a bit late. Get your gold and then do better things later. A bit late. I might do another one. You could put more Levites out, but that's... That's me triple red. That's me triple blue. I will get to put one more out at the end of the third Sabbath. It's like red blessings. Am I going to do that again? I've got three. It's like It's possible, isn't it? Get them from plenty of bits. Oh, the gatherer gives me the gives me a load of resources that I need though. I don't need people. Soldier. I'm not convinced by my decision there. But it's happened. Right. So scoring for me. How many golden flame spaces? I'm on one. So one, two, three, four. A point plus one for every scribe. That's five. And then a point for every red blessing is three. Yep, took character cards and score all the cards. And he gets a silver per worker. He's got four workers. Greedy guts. And then highest scroll tile, he's gone on the two scroll tile. And then what's he got the most of? Gatekeepers, still got three of them. Scribes, one. Levites, four. So it's going to be Levites, one, two, three, four. And then a point per wall. He's built one, Antu. No, he didn't build one. That was an accident. And golden spaces on the altar track they have reached or passed. One, two, three, four, then. Okay. We've shuffled these things already, so we've done these after the Sabbath. For me, the prophets are now going to be on 10 and 14. So he's already passed the prophets. I, if I can move a couple, that's worth five points to me. And, I mean, in the middle... It's lose a food, lose three points. We're already past that, though. At the moment, we're losing a food. Definitely want to get five points, because it's a ten-point swing, isn't it? If I don't get those... Not a ten-point swing. I'm not losing five. But, you know, don't want to let him get five ahead. So, we've got a tiny bit of food coming in. Move the profits, get all your workers back off your board. Got six workers to do stuff with. And if they go out for scribes, which could be pointing... This is the card left in your hand at the end of the game. Scores as well, as if it was tucked. A point for every scribe you've got not in the top row, I think that one is. The highlighted one. The last game was the opposite one, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's... Yeah. That's what I said. A point for every scribe that's not in the top row. That's already worth four points, but there's no path to it just yet. This be be uh, farmers and labourers don't have to be fed in the Sabbath. Uh, at the end of the game, you normally get a point for every five money. This is every three instead. Uh, over here, it's every set of three workers you've got out on the board. So that's gatekeepers, scribes, Levites, point each. And over there, it's a point for every completed row in the temple. Which, the way it's going, that could be a five-pointer. Right, so I need to... We shuffle these up, and I need to draw one. Because I haven't got four now, because it's round two. Are you learning Japanese, Monica? 
I learned for like probably a good like six months. I was learning Japanese, doing really well at it. And I like faltered a bit. And it's probably been like a, over a year since I've done it. And I've probably forgotten most of it. I'm annoyed. I'm not annoyed that I am annoyed that I'm not doing it, but I'm annoyed that I haven't got like that drive to go back to doing it again. So I was really enjoying it for a while. Hopefully it'll kick in at some point. Right. I've drawn a card, but I'm no longer the first player. The bot's going to kick us off. And he's at the water gate. Oh dear. He's got loads of money. So that's going to be who owns the water gate? I don't think anybody yet. It, money goes on that. Three money is paid. He's going up the altar twice. One, two, gets a gold. Nearly at the end of it. And then what's he doing for his turn? Oh yeah, altar leader. I haven't done that. Thanks, Shem. Then, has he got... He's got everything. Two workers, two gold, no problem. Build the... Scroll tile the highest that he can go. Well, that's up there, isn't it? So he has to pay four gold. He hasn't got four gold. So the highest he can go is the third row. So he could go on any of these spaces. He'll Will he prioritise... I would imagine he'd prioritise bits where he doesn't have to pay me as much. So he's not going to go there, is he? And pay me twice. I feel like it said something about... He's got enough gold to do the action, that's okay. Does he prioritise not paying me, or would he just go on any of those things? He'll always branch off his own scribes if given the choice. And he'll only branch off white workers if he can spend a silver. So will he prioritise spending the silver to do that? Like going on one of these spaces, I would imagine. He'd go on one of these, wouldn't he? Because then, he has to pay me. How right in the streak, how the streak works. He, has to, he still has to pay me, and then he wouldn't have to pay anyone for that one. Like drawing a line up. So he'd go for one of these two. Which one is it? It's the rightmost one. He's going there. So he has to pay three for not three money, three gold because it's in the three row and he gets that food for being the first one to go in that row which uh, converts to money instead. And I get a silver. So that's it, isn't it? Yes. He's burned through all of his silver to do that, but that's... He's had that food. Now, has he opened opportunity? No. I want him to go up there. That's where we want the stuff. That's going to be worth the most points, I think. Maybe, though, the card in your hand scores. I've done rubbish with... Um, with Blessings. They're not going to score me much. You've, you've put one up there. Right, so it's time to make a decision. So we've got a lot of building cards out. We have got some reds, and I did take all of this wood. You've got two, four reds right now. Well, I want nine. It'll take a while. If you went with six, you'd finish the temple. Ideally, you'd want... <laughs> There's a way of getting food. Okay, I did get all of this wood to do the altar. But... I can finish the temple. He would have gone on the far right, paying one silver. Priority rules for paying workers are only when there's multiple paths to branch from. Okay. So he needs to pay a silver for branching through. Yeah, but he still pays all the same stuff. Okay. Maybe I want to finish the temple off. Stops him going there as well, doesn't it? How many does this get me? Two, four. Could be seven. Wouldn't have any cinders. I only need six, though. But I want the food from that. OK. 
Okay. So it's a tiny bit of a waste elder wise. Yeah, we've got seven red, because I haven't got any cinders, annoyingly. Could have chosen to have cinders. No, let's not take that back. Why? Do what you like. Because yeah, we're going to... So do the trade. So that's three money. And a money to the water gate, which has got a lot of money on it right now, to get four food, which I'm paying. This gets me a wood. Yeah, take backs. If I was more intelligent, I would have chosen to have uh, cinders as well. So we can do this. Right. So, because then I've got the most again, right? So we just gain two points each, which is better than him being ahead. So with the seven points, I've got four cinders as well. I can get cinders from a trader. Oh yeah, I could just put someone there as well instead of um, being a taker backer. Let's be honest. I'm a taker backer though. Uh, yeah, because then I'm not wasting the, the point either. So six here, the seventh is going on the altar. So I'm getting a food and a coin. That's, we've got to go up there. And, we can, he's gone up, he's linked it. Right. Three points and a food and a money for doing this. My mind jumps about, I have to try and remember where I am. Two points each, because we've both got the most, or nobody gets any points. Same difference. Four money each. I'm not happy with him getting any money, but hopefully it's going to stop him getting a ton of stuff from going out in the temple. And then we've got one action point spare to be able to go to the altar, which is go on the tent, which is get an orange blessing, which completes a column, which gives me another tent, which gives me another altar, which gives me another food. I haven't paid for food ever. I think I have. I never picked it up, did I? I paid the money for it and then never picked it. Did you pay the money for it? I think so. I feel like I did. Oh, he wins the ties. Oh. Right. Well, I couldn't have put two out anyway. Okay. So, that's it, isn't it? So, have I not paid for something? I feel like I've got a lot of stuff. I've just gained a load of things just pinballed. It's possible. Oh, yeah, we got loads of food and money from that, didn't Yeah, I did pay. Horse gate. He's got loads of money. He's definitely paying for this. One, two, three, four. To get another purple blessing. I'm glad that keeps coming out because it's not what he needs. And one tent, which is two points. And then his scheme. Rembrandt to turn a new one over. Has he got a person and two gold? No. Has he got two gold? No. He gets a worker and two altar. One, two. So two points for that step. And now he's on the end of it. So he's always going to break ties now. So, yeah. So there's no point doing altar now, is there? There's no point doing the red action whatsoever. Because the temple's full. I mean, there's benefits still for going up the altar. But. Largely. I was going to do that as well. I was going to try and get loads of action points. That's why I took all the wood. I was just going to do a load of... Um, try and build up all my red points and just run to the end. Oh well, he's done it. So let's concentrate on something else. So... I mean, we have got a couple of reds out now, but now we've got... Maybe we want to do some building to try and get a gold. Because then we can start putting the scribes out in the upper echelons. Or maybe do some building. Right, so we can do... I mean, we can get a gold right there. I've got loads of money. And with a scribe, that'd give you... This is never... Does, does the banner that I'm using for the action have to be on the card that I just played? It's unconventional doing it like that, but I could get one, two, three, four, seven blue and go up there from just buying the two gold that I need. There's two gold up top. But maybe it would be best. I could still buy the gold, but since I'm putting the grey out, we'd get 
three gray. Great, you could just pick up a gold. What's going to be worth it about that? Three gray plus you is six gray. Could you build something as well? No, that's seven. What about the water gate? That's only five. We haven't got the resources to do it. We've been here before, I think. Maybe it would be good to be scribing. And then when you did do the build, you'd have more stuff. Go on, you convinced me. Right, so go there to give us some more blues. You don't have to pay the banner. I was hoping for that. Usually. Yeah, it seems strange now. I've not had to do this. But it seems better. So we've got four, seven blue. I'm going to pay a money to the east gate, which is owned by the board. And then one, two, three, four to get two gold, which there's no point taking because I'm going to spend it straight away. The seven blue and the two gold are getting spent. I'm putting a scribe out. Where have all my people gone? You've spent them perhaps needlessly. I get a point right away. And I get three food for going up there. He's worth four points at the end of the game because that's the row. And five points extra on top of the one that I just got six points total for doing that and 10 points altogether and he's another scribe for that and we don't need to pay him yes that's a good move I think because that is five full rows of the temple max right got no more blue to pay already done the trade draw a card move on but valley gate he's still got money one to the valley gate that's mine and then uh money for uh gold has he got... No, I haven't turned one over yet. I need to take these away, so I remember. <laughs> it should be obvious. It is what I'm playing normally. Something about being stood in this position. Two gold he ain't got. Not to one worker. He's got loads of workers. So he's going to clear some rubble. So starting from the valley gate, the first place he clears is here. So let's turn that into two gold. He gets an orange blessing. You've stopped. And... and uh, Flame, which, when you can't get any more flames, is a coin. There we go. And then, oh yeah, I haven't paid for any branching whatsoever, have I? I've built off me. Good job I could afford that, actually, because I wasn't thinking about that at all. Right. So now we could do some building. You've only got one worker left if you're going to use it as an elder. I've got a lot of food, though, so... Feeding people isn't as much of a problem. You've got two wood. Surely there's somewhere good to build. That would be five. It's not a lot of points. But somewhere with just cinder cinders aren't going to help you build, though. Maybe you're just going to have to clear a space off. Going to the temple's not exciting at all. In a couple of spaces to get you gold. You're already ahead of him. So you're going to get the five points, so that's okay. Not going to get the three points no matter what. I mean, more scribing is the best thing. What's this give me? Five. Oh, that's a shame. Six. Could just get me the two gold off there. I mean, five could just get me the gold and, say, the wood, which is a red blessing, which isn't going to get me a bonus, but it's a point. And then that's another blue as well for... You could do like another build there next time and you'd have six. Get that two gold. And then for doing scribing, remember these haven't been played, you'd have three, five, eight. And the gold needed to do it. Or, there's five right now. There's three. It's just, you need nine to do that. You need eight to do this, and you'd have three wood. And you'd be building next to this, so you'd get, you're getting him resources, though, as well. Go on. I'm going to regret that, aren't I? You're not going to have a scribe? If you do that, 
Okay. Five. Clear them off. Just get the resources. Just get the red blessing. I could turn some of these resources into money if I want. Kind of depends what the last card is, which I should know, but I can't remember. Something that gets me, no, you've used the one that you got your gold, you paid that. Do you want to sell resources? They're worth two money each. You haven't got much money. Might be the difference of getting you a scribe on like a lower level, which is still three points. You've only got one scribe to put out, though. Okay. Sell one. I don't know why. Feels acceptable to sell one. Right, Fountain Gate. He's paying one money for an orange. Hey, I've been quite lucky in how his blessings have come out, really. From my point of view. He's not been so lucky. Has he got a worker and two gold? Absolutely. Right, he's a gold to put a Levite out, and then gets a blessing, so that's going to be that which gets him a gold, and two points. Then, all the five Levites, he can't do anything though, can he? So does he not do any of this? I'm not sure actually, would he do it because he can get the Levite out and a couple of benefits? It's probably the best thing he can do on the card, isn't it still? He would just turn silver into gold, wouldn't he? Yeah, keep him, keep him up with the points and all of the stuff. So he can't put a gold in the temple. He can turn two silver into gold. He can gain a silver, turn it to gold, gain a silver. So he can still do stuff. It's not like... It's not based on him absolutely having to put it in the temple, I suppose. Okay. So now... You've only got one more opportunity to put a scribe out, really. So do you want to do this? Two, four, five, six. I wish I hadn't put one of them out now. You could just grab the two gold. Because that's seven. Like building that and you haven't got and you haven't got a, a stone. And that's another red. Go on, do it. Grab them. Another red blessing. Another couple of points for that. I feel like I'm being a bit wasteful with my turns though now. But I've not got a lot left to do with really. I've, I've, So yeah, it looks like I can build now because I've got... Oh, I should have a card. I should see what my last thing coming out is. It's a big build. Could be doing that next turn. Where would it have to go? One of these spaces. So it's only getting one more point. So it would be what? Could go there. So you would have three, five, seven. Four, five, six, seven. You haven't got three white. Somewhere you can build. Three, five, seven, eight. Looking at spaces that give me red <laughs> rewards as well to be greedy. I mean, there's three, five, seven. Wood and two... Maybe I do a build and then the final thing is put the one scribe out. Wherever. It's got to be in one of these spaces, I suppose, hasn't it? Build there next time. Yeah, go for it. Your turn's done now, though. You've done all the bits. This, this that you've played, though, you could be paying money to... You could have paid money to get resources to be able to build something.
No, don't confuse it. You've done an action. Don't go back on it. <laughs> Could have done that, but I haven't. Fishgate, he can't afford a trade, so he moves along here and gets a red, which is now what he's already moved up there. I gave him the gold for that. Now he's up there. Yes. And then his action is going to be... Yes. The question is, has he got that? Yes, he's definitely got it. The lowest place that he could go is going to be one of these two. He's going to have to branch off me no matter what. So the thing's on the left. He's going to go on the left. I... Does he get the points? He ignores the scroll tiling completely, doesn't he? I don't think... Yeah, he doesn't get the points or anything. He pays two gold because it's on row two. And I think that's that. Got some scribes out. End game, I think. Okay. So I think that's the plan then. We're going to... And then you're going to have, for the last action, three, four, five, six, seven, which is just enough to do the scribe at the top. So we can do a build. We've got three, five, six, seven now. I've worked out that I could do here. Yeah, because it can't really be boosted in any way. I don't really want to help him. Yeah, do it. Let's not calculate things again. That costs seven. I already had a wood to do the last thing. We got a purple blessing. All paid for. Three cards. It's only my second wall, isn't it? So point per wall is probably not what I'm going to choose. Uh, but we can have a stone tent, I'd say, out of everything. Food. What are we going to need to pay in food? 16, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Already got more than 6 food. Not going to have anyone. Oh, we're going to have one person to be a farmer, aren't we? Because one person comes back. Yeah, tent. Point difference would be an extra point if you had a food and a money. But no, it's going to be 2 points for tenting. So you go there. Tent gets me 2 points. Building next to here gets me a gold. And then I don't, I'm probably not going to do another wall, so I don't really mind what goes on top and bottom. Then he is having his last action. He's got a coin, so that's going to go, oh, now it's caught up to me, hasn't it? Uh, he goes up there and he gets two points for that. And his final action shall be, has he got two workers and a gold? Yes. So he is going to pay a gold to put a Levite out. Yikes. And he gets three points. And it's definitely in the rules. When he gets to do an elder, forgotten. When he gets to bring an elder back, he instead. Uh, they move a tent space instead of retrieving an elder, which gets him two money. Then, for each one of these, he can't put the gold out. So. Turns two silver into two gold. Gets a silver, turns it to gold. Gets a silver, turns it to gold. Ouch. Let's build them up, honey. Right, last action was going to be... I've got to put the card here. Which gives us three, four, five, six, seven. And two gold. And so the best thing to do here, for every three walls or gates, get a point, and get a point for putting it down there, the best thing to do is score the card in your hand, which happens to be the singer that I think we started the game off with. A point for every Levite, which is four. And that's only going to work out to be two, I think. What have I got? Three gatekeepers, two walls. Yeah, that's only going to work out to be two points, isn't it? And four points for being in the row, and I don't have to feed them. And it's another point for scribes that are out. And top scribe, top two scribes. <gasps> right, that's pro that's surely got to be the thing I'm putting out for scoring. Right. Okay. Sabbath? Yes. Prophet's Judgment. We are both uh, way past the end. So we both get five points. Then... I get a person back... And see what at the end, wooden, stone, and food is worth two silver each. So four silver, four silver. The best thing to do is a farmer, because that's worth five silver. Which is a point, isn't it? 
because I don't need the food. I'm just thinking in terms of raw points. That's worth a point for going there because that's worth 80% of a point. Probably because I didn't upgrade it because you could, you could get gold if you'd upgraded this. So then I need to pay. Oh, I worked it out earlier. I do apologize, everyone. I've got to work this out every time. It's only six, isn't it? Three gatekeepers, three workers on my board. It's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because I don't have to pay for scribes, which I seem to have done a lot of. So I've used my farmers and laborers. I've resolved the profit judgment already. Pay a food per worker. Don't have to lose any points. Took a character card. So let's have a look at the other options. I've done two walls, three purple things. A point and then a point for every gatekeeper is four. A point and then a point for every development is three. Orange things too. Like now you don't have to worry about um, not having the card anymore. It's the end. So definitely going to have... Points for your highest two scribes, which is the highest ones are in fours. So that's going to be worth some good points. Only took in one at the end. Took the required character card, score all character cards. So I suppose the downside is could have just done a tiny bit more altar and got another point from there, but still getting four from there. One, two, three, four. Is it going to be enough? Then a point plus one for every scribe, three, four, five, six. So seven in total. A point for every red blessing is five. And highest two scribes is eight. Then a silver per worker, two. Highest scroll tile is three for him. It's gotta be Levites, isn't it? Yeah, because he didn't he never did he did one gate. He did three scribes, but no, he's got six Levites. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And a point per wall, he didn't do one. And golden spaces, he's done them all. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hopefully scribes is going to do this. Yep, done all of his bits. Then uh, we don't have to do after Sabbath stuff, so it's just end game scoring. So for me, let's do his first. So every gold he's got is five. Oof. Every gold he's got is five is three silver. So three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. I only put a few fives out. There's twenty-one. So he's got twenty-three altogether. So actually it doesn't make any difference, does it? He Divided by five, so that's going to be four points in silver. Three because he's the altar leader, but I couldn't have done anything about that. If you're on the bottom, you're in the lead at that point. Victory points from walls and gates. Well, he only did that one gate, so that's one, two, three, four. And then from his scribes, it's the row that they're in, isn't it? So three, five, seven. Is that enough? I don't know, actually. Right, so that's that's his score. 87 we need to beat. So things we have left. Gold is worth three silver. That's six. Wood is worth two. Eight. And so is food. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Actually, I've got a pretty good one. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So five points from that. So I think... We've done it now. Um, two, uh, we've done the silver. Then two points per development tile. Did two of them. Three points if you throw to the leader. Don't bring up sore memories. The victory points from walls and gates. Did a few of them. Four, six, eight. Three is a few. Yes, we've done it. Uh, and then points from scribes and scrolls. So we've got, good, this was to show the walls as well, but it would be, there we go, uh, a centred scribe setting there. So just from the rows, 4, 8, nothing, 10, 11, 12, 13. 
and then from the score on them themselves, score the card that's left in your hand. We have got four Levites, one, two, three, four, and then points for completed temple rows, one, two, three, four, five. So 106 to 87. Asterisk. As Shem, as Shem said in the chat, the, the bot's been rebalanced and tweaked. And yeah, less likely to overcook in the temple. Yeah, we have found like the temple doesn't always get that build, but I think it's because I don't I haven't been building as much in the temple. But yeah, he's not been um competitive on walls. So but saying he's gonna be in the final game. It's just a prototype I've got of the of the solo. But you can see that it's still pretty close up to the end there. Like if he'd started getting on some of these scribe tiles in the way. Got right in the way on me altars there, but I, I feel like it, it came together quite well as well. Like there was a couple of bits where I thought like it was going a bit aimless and just making decisions, but yeah, it, it turned out pretty well in the end, didn't it? Oh, thanks, Shem. So yes, this is Ezra and Nehemiah, which is on Kickstarter right now. It launched today. You can see on the Kickstarter page what the final game is going to have. There's some promos with some more scroll tiles. You can see you can get coins, you can get all sorts of other stuff for other Garfield games as well, which is a good chance you can see playthroughs for on this channel for a lot of them. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can you can make it happen and get a copy pretty quick and stuff. And you can see all the final stuff. But I think like visually, this is pretty much it. Like based on other prototypes, maybe some wood bits will be slightly different colors. But in terms of art and all of the bits, this is the game. Solid final tower score. I'll treasure that. It, it did seem to like, I like how it all, uh, it all came together in the end. Like you got a 145 day streak on Duolingo. I bet Duolingo was disgusted with me. I can't remember what streak I had, but it, it was pretty nice. I feel like it was like, it was November when I started learning the alphabet. Well, not the alphabet, but you know, the Hiragana and stuff, the Katakana. And I think it was like, it was probably May when I was like hitting myself that I was still doing it. I knew that I wasn't going to do it on holiday. There you go. I hope. Uh, hey, let us know how uh, how you're doing on your Japanese education. So my, surely it's going to be one of them things. Stuff would kick in, wouldn't it, if I started doing it? I'd like to say this is energizing me, and I'm going to go straight on Geolingo, but I know that I'm not. I would like that click to happen. But thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Sorry that I've missed some chat while my brain was burning. Hopefully there wasn't too much steam coming out of my ears. But I hope you enjoyed the game. Most of all, we you watching it now or later? It's on Kickstarter. You can uh, it's a fun ja learn Japanese to survive trilogy on Steam. Yeah, I see them. I haven't played them. I'll have to check it out. Maybe that would do it. But thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Uh, you can see more from me in the upcoming days and stuff. There's a load of videos coming up next week. There's stuff what's happening. There's uh, a touch of evil is uh, happening in terms of Halloween-y things. That's uh, coming up on Sunday. A little bit of a break. If you're wondering where's Shadows of Brimstone, take a little break for a little bit because I haven't got time to do all of the things, unfortunately. But squeezing things where we can. A score over 100 is great. That's what we need to... Put in uh, to get quotes of this on the front page of the YouTube page. Tom got a great score on, I think. I just saw 133. We built all 12 walls and four gates. It will be good. I think like I've I've done maybe like usually a bit more building than this. Well, you've built two walls. What's a bit more? Yeah, so a decent bit more building than this. Usually get through the deck and start seeing the things I put on the bottom again. Yeah, it would be good to like just set a target to just do a load of um do a load of wall building and try and get it through it was good about like the like it, it's hard to replicate in other things isn't it but that was good that was what i liked so much about the hadrian's wall campaign that it was like you know the thing that you like to do well that's harder to do this game you got to do this thing instead Set your own target to do a load of wall in instead. You'll score over 115. And I don't I haven't said it since the start, but yeah, the, the bot would have started with 
loads more stuff. So this game he started with a worker and two money and no gold. On two stars, he would have started with two workers, four money, two gold. And so you could see from the start of the game, there would have been a lot more. Yes, he's got these things. He will go and do that stuff. And he would score more points each Sabbath as well. <laughs> the game is as long as I don't sleep worries. That's the trouble. Sleeping, eating and work getting in the way. But, you know, outside of that, there's a, there's a lot of gaming going on. Outside of all of that stuff, there's a lot more stuff to film this week, actually. But it's it's going to be coming up on, hey, Patreon, if you want to be on there, if you'd like, it's great. You can see stuff early. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out on the main channel next week, I think. And then there's there's more stuff to come as well. We're going to be doing, like, the, the playthrough vote has been happening. Final Girl is winning that, I think, still. And then Cthulhu Death May Die has come uh, second for our Halloween themed vote. And then November, I think it's, uh, it's going to be a, a good old Euro vote again. Hey, there could be Euro -y Hall Halloween things that make it up there. The speaking that's difficult. I, yeah, I was trying to do like, it, it's hard as well. Like, it just sounds like doing a bad impression. Trying to do like the speaking and stuff. It's hard like making. You're making your tongue do different things, aren't you? It's hard to explain. But yeah, I thought it's because I was only ever doing it on my own on Duolingo and like the the Genki textbooks. Yeah, it's it'd be easier if you were doing it. Like I was gonna do it at some point. I don't know if it was at college or something or university or something like that. I should have boring computer science. Where's that got me? Nowhere. A degree in board games. I'll go and teach that. If they start that, if board games take over enough. Lawrence. I wonder if there would be a token for 100. If it, like. If it doesn't happen as much. I suppose it'd be different as well. Like competing and being all together. I'm gonna. Have a sip of tea. While well, I'll let the delay kick in and give Shem a chance to respond rather than just saying bye and cutting the chat off for everyone. Does it does it stay? Like once I've gone, can you stay in the window and it exists? Or does ending the stream shut the whole thing down? I'm weird that I'm uh, shutting the whole thing down a little bit. So that's the problem as well. Like Rach watches loads of animes. I don't really watch animes. It was mainly for like gameplay and stuff and reading. That I wanted to do it, but I was trying to watch them to like learn it a bit as well. I should watch them. I was enjoying the ones that I watched. I think there was like a witch, a girl witch. I have to try and find the history. I bet the history doesn't go back that far. There we go. Thanks, Shem. Thanks so much for being here as well. Everybody, thanks, Shem, for keeping me right in the game and uh, answering all your questions and stuff. The campaign is on. You can see it on Kickstarter, Ezra and Nehemiah. You can get it. You can make it happen and stuff. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. I will be back soon doing more stuff. Uh, but yeah, have a lovely time until then. And I'll see you for the next game. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye, bye.